Hi there guys and welcome back to the next and second live stream of Same Ship Different Day. Firstly, let's do a quick sound check if everything's okay. I know what happened last time. Someone say in the chat for me. I think we're looking good. This is excellent. I've been seeing the chat as well. Quite a few people from England. So thank you for tuning in so late. I know it's getting on back home now. Must be around 11 o'clock. And I uh, hope you've got your tea. I've got mine. I'm good to go. So I have had some excellent questions and lots of good feedback as well for my latest videos and from the live stream, live stream. So thank you very much for those. I do really appreciate it. And it means I've been able to come back to you with another one with some questions prepared, ready to go. But I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got for me in the chat as well as we go through this process. Obviously the channels continue to grow. This has been two weeks since the last live stream and it's continuing to blow up and it's just absolutely amazing. So I really do appreciate everybody who's subscribing, anyone that's new, anyone that's new on the live stream as well. Thank you for coming along. Hello to all. The comments are going crazy right now. I appreciate that. Um, let's kick things off with the start of the question and answers. First one we've got then coming in from Trevor. He actually commented on two of my videos with this question. So he was obviously very keen to get it out there. As you can see it on the screen now, what do you like to do in your time off? Do you like to stay home in the UK, live abroad or go backpacking around the world? So I'll start with that part. So firstly, I do still live in the UK at home. Um, I did purchase my own house several years ago when I was 23, just before I became second officer. But I rent that out. So I do actually still live with the parents, I'm afraid to say, 26 years old. Uh, but they don't mind having me. I'm never back that long anyway. Because when I do go home, I do like to travel a lot. My girlfriend is American, so I often go over to see her. I have done a few cruises over the last few years as well. I like to see how the uh, other half live. Um, so I do like to travel quite a lot and see some of the countries. And it's also an opportunity for me because I have that sort of time off to go back. Oh, hello. We just got a new subscriber. He may not be watching this, but somewhere else on the channel. So thank you, David James Williams, for subscribing there. If any of you are watching and not yet subscribed, please do hit that button and you're going to get a shout out right on screen there. Um, so I like to travel. I like to go around. I like to see the places that maybe I've been to when working, but didn't really get to explore that much. Um, so I like to take the opportunity of having two, three months off at a time to do that and to go around. Uh, Trevor did also ask about the paper charts, and we do still have a few paper charts on board. Uh, for the regions around Chile, especially. Whoa, Danny Black, thank you so much. Super chat. Hello, right in there, 799 profits. Amazing, thank you so much. Stay safe and stay sane. Yes, I will do my best to do that. For anyone that hasn't seen Danny's channel, make sure you go and have a look. Um, it's really incredible stuff. He's mainly focusing on his music at the moment and some excellent live streams out there. If you wanna see how it's done, go check out his channel. Um, he's helping me a lot with all that I'm doing. I owe him a lot uh, for his support through this. So yeah, Trevor, so paper charts, we do have a few on board. The one you saw in my cabin the last time was a routing chart. So not actually used for navigation, but to help use with planning recommended routes, that kind of thing. Let's take a look in the chat then. Where's everyone coming from? So Waterford, Connecticut, hello. Uh, lots from the UK as well. Hello from Wigan, Mr. Wigan Dave. Welcome. Florida from Ship Time. Oh, another subscriber, Joe W. This is going to start to get constant now. It's getting busy. Do we have any questions in the chat yet? Don't forget, guys, if you want to ask me anything, please feel free. If you do put a super chat in, then it's going to pop up and I'm more likely to see it. But any question, I will do my best to answer. So what's the position of the ship? Or what's my, your position on the ship, sorry, from IXQC? Axel QC, sorry. Um, so my position is senior second officer. Uh, I do navigate uh, from the bridge. And uh, generally I'm doing eight hours watch keeping every day. I know I answered this in the last stream, but for any newcomers, um, I work on board for Princess Cruises. Um, I just do this in my own time. This isn't for them. All my opinions, all my views that I express throughout all my videos and these live streams are just my own. I like to do this. I like to get in touch with people out and around the world, especially at the moment when people can't cruise. Um, so I like to give them a bit of an insight as to what's going on. But my main job is just to be on the bridge, navigating the ship. However, we are currently in port. We're in the port of Curaçao. As you can see on the screen behind me, that's my current location. We're alongside. Um, 
which is nice to finally be alongside somewhere. Uh, we've been here nearly two weeks now, um, and we were here to basically start our layup period, essentially, uh, maintaining the ship whilst we have no passengers on board. Thank you for that question. Uh, so here's Kat. You're asking, are you still quarantined on the ship in Aruba? So yeah, so we're not actually in Aruba. But we are still under the quarantine in Curaçao. We've only got a couple more days left. And even though in the last video I said they're going to test us, now having reviewed our medical records, seeing that everybody's healthy on board, but not required to test us, we are going to be able to fly. We're going to be able to go straight to the airport and fly home. Theoretically, once this quarantine is over, but also once our relievers have arrived to replace us, obviously. Question from Laptop Style Life. In a previous video, you mentioned your contract was ending. Are you getting extended? Yes, I did just get extended. I just signed until the 1st of June, which is a temporary extension to bring everyone up to the same date, um, essentially. And then we will see from there, depending on when my reliever can come out uh, to replace me. Oh, from Palm Springs. Oh, 108 degrees. Wow, I'm assuming that's Fahrenheit. Uh, um, but still very hot. Black Magic, how do you get a job working on cruise ships? Is it university a place to start? That is a good question in the chat there from Black Magic. Um, yes, so basically you have to go to what's called a nautical college. I started applying when I was about 16 years old. Um, started going to the open days, meeting the companies, met Princess Cruises, uh, Carnival UK, several companies. And um, from there, kept in touch with them until I was 18, once I'd done my A-levels and then applied, went down for an interview, and they've now, Princess Cruise has hired me and have sponsored me all the way through to this stage now. Uh, so it's actually an excellent program to be involved with. You do time at sea and time in college. It's a nautical college because it's not large enough to be called a university, but it is essentially the same as you would find a university. Uh, apart from luckily for me, no fees because Princess have sponsored me throughout. All right, let's go back to one of the other questions from the videos I wanted to mention. Number two, which is from Slowthorpe76. Do you always work on a coal or could you be assigned to different ships? Thanks for making these vids. They're very interesting. Excellent. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Um, different ships completely. This is my first contract on a coal and first time in this rank as well, senior second. Uh, my last ship was the Island Princess, which is the sister ship, so very similar. But I was there for two years as second officer. And I've been all over the fleet. I think I've sailed on virtually every class. Uh, some small differences, not going on the diamond and sapphire just yet. Um, but I've been on every kind of ship, more or less, the Princess Home from the biggest. Uh, I was on the Regal just after she was launched, uh, all the way down to one of the smallest uh, Dawn Princess. He's now gone over to P&O, Pacific Explorer, which is where I met the Danny Black. Um, so let's go back to the chat then. Phil, hello from Australia. Hello, Phil. Do you have information about resuming domestic cruises out of Australian ports? When safe to do so, we are keen to cruise again from Brisbane, Australia. I don't have any information at the moment, I'm afraid. I'm sure there will be press releases. Often for most important information like this, the press release does match the same time that we come out and are told. Um, we will see. Let's hope we got started soon. I see they're starting up with the AFL and all sorts of different things over in Australia because the cases are so low. Um, so perhaps they'll be back cruising before you know it. I do have a feeling it's going to be over that side of the world, either Australia or Asia, that will get the initial uh, cruising. And again, hopefully will be domestic to make it more straightforward. Chris Barnett, another question there in the chat. What do you miss the most about normal operations? It's a tricky one. I'd love to say the passengers, but to be honest, I don't work directly with the guests every day. Um, so it's can't say that I'm seeing them all the time. For me, I do miss some of the services though that are available uh, when the guests are on board. So such as Sabatini's restaurant, Bio Cafe, you know, this good, the good food um, and service. And to be fair, the food has been excellent these last couple of weeks uh, whilst undergoing this uh, second quarantine. And, uh, but it is still buffet line and you can't quite go to the specialty restaurant. The other thing that I miss dearly is my girlfriend. She was here working when she was a dancer. She is a dancer. So she was here working when we had guests on board, but now she's no longer required. So she has been sent home, um, which is terrible for me, really. So that's the biggest thing I miss from normal operation on here. 
So congrats on the senior second, finger crossed. Thank you very much from Laptop Style Life there in the chat. Mel's got some information there. Good evening, Mel. How are you doing? Or good morning, sorry, Australia. Um, Port's not resuming until 17th of September because of government restrictions. Okay, Mel, thank you for that. Good to know. Everybody, that's an answer there from Mel for us. I saw another question here. Let me go back. Teresa Miller, you asked, will you come back to the coal once you get to leave? So originally I was rotated back here uh, in August, but now as my day of being on board is getting closer to that date, uh, that contract has been retracted for now. Um, so we'll see. It may be that they need me back here. It may be that they send me to another ship. We'll have to see what they offer me. I'm also linked with my girlfriend. So hopefully um, we can be back together on a ship together once uh, normal operations resume, um, which means we can be back on the same ship, wherever that may be. So let's go back to the questions from the videos that I had. Question number three was from Pamela Howell. I enjoy hearing from an officer serving on a princess ship, which is her favorite cruise line. Thank you. What size of ship do you prefer? So as I was saying, I've been on all different kinds of ships um, within the fleet. And for me and for most of the officers, you'll find that they believe the smallest are usually the best. My favorite ship was probably the Dawn Princess. I was on her as cadet back uh, in 2013. Um, and then she became the P&O's uh, Pacific Explorer. So, and I was also there as my first trip second officer. So I've got a lot of uh, a big connection with that ship, if you like, and it's definitely one of my favorites. I also loved all the P&O ships, Pacific Jewel, Pacific Pearl were great fun. And Princess, um, obviously there's some good ships out there as well. The Coal, I think, is also getting to be one of my favorites. Uh, she's a really nice size for the number of guests that you have on board. Lots of space to go around. You don't feel cramped at all. Um, and lots of venues available for different shows and guest entertainers. Thanks for that question. Pamela, I hope that answered it for you. Let's have a look in the chat. Who's popping up? Would you ever like to be a captain someday? That's a question there from James. Yeah, it's something I answered in the last uh, live stream, James, James, right at the end there about being a captain. Um, I'm taking things steady. Obviously, when I started out in this career, I wanted to be captain, but it does take a long time. I've got to see uh, what career options I have available to me. And if I'm going to be captain, it may not be on a cruise ship. It may be uh, elsewhere on a different kind of vessel. My ticket is unlimited and so could be applicable for different types of vessel as well. Thanks for that question. All right, I'm sorry to lose my voice already. Here we go, T, that's good. Melissa May, how do you get your hair cut? Another good question. I'm gonna make a video on this. In fact, I did film a video essentially for this two years ago on the Island Princess, um, which I never got out to you. So. Either I'll put that footage together or I'll make a new one and combine it to show you just how we get our hair cut on board uh, for the crew at least. Obviously we do have the, uh, the guest spa available not during normal operations, but at the moment that's not feasible. And to be honest, the majority of the time, most of us go down and we have our hair cut by one of the crew members on board. There's lots of guys that as a second job, a slight second income, um, they do cut hair and they do an excellent job. So hopefully, you agree? So I'll be making a video on that, hopefully shortly. Mr. Wigan Dave, here we go. Would you need to become a staff captain before being considered as the captain? Yes. Oh, Jay Spiegel, thank you very much. Another fantastic super chat. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Right, let's go on to your questions, shall we? Um, if you weren't live streaming now, what would you be doing on board during this time off? Good question. Um, so most evenings, what I've been doing after I finish watch actually is going up to the Lido pool and going for a swim and laying out in the sun because it's a nice way to, to chill. So I would have done that for around about 4.30 after I finished. And then the sun sets quite early here. Uh, it's already gone down behind uh, some of the superstructure of the ship. So from about six o'clock, you can't be in the sun. So what I tend to do is head over to the gym do a quick workout if I can, and um, and then I'll head for dinner and then back to bed for a quick nap before starting again at midnight. It's kind of a continuous cycle here. So um, good question. Thank you very much. And thank you again for that Super Chat donation. I really appreciate it. Uh, Help support the channel. So 
So sorry, Mr. Wigan Dave, I almost forgot to reply, reply to answer your question. So would you have to be staff captain first? Yes, you would. Uh, I've never seen anyone come straight in as captain. Even people, even uh, captains that have come from other companies would first do at least one or two contracts as staff captain before they would go back to their position of captain. So for me, certainly that's one step I have to have to take. Melissa, that looks good. Thank you very much. I think so too. Robin Friedman, are you in a crew cabin or a guest cabin? Good question. So last time I came to you on the stream, I was still in my crew cabin or my officer cabin. Um, and that was my last uh, night in that cabin. I did then transfer into this cabin, which is identical to the one you would have seen on my quarantine video uh, from a while ago. If you haven't seen that, please do go back and watch it. I quite enjoyed making that one. Um, and yeah, so it's a balcony cabin, which is nice. I haven't utilized it too much because obviously I'm working a lot. Uh, but it's nice to have the big soft princess bed, which I'm sure a lot of you watching will miss as well. Thank you for that question. Right, okay. Billy. Yeah, when a ship leans, why do they call it list? And where does the word come from instead of just saying the ship is leaning? So yeah, it is uh, listing terms. Leaning is not something what we tend to use in nautical terms. I can't tell you exactly why leaning is not used. Um, I suppose because that's a force applied, whereas uh, healing and listing as a force sort of as an outcome of something happening. So healing usually is due to a turn to something that you infiltrate yourself, whereas listing may be something that uh, is unexpected, it can be due to wind, sudden wind gusts and force acting on the vessel, uh, or even depending on what you're doing regarding ballast and different things on board, moving around can cause a list. Uh, we do have uh, healing tanks to try and counteract the list because the list is not wanted, but the heal is essentially created by yourself. Uh, leaning, I can't, I don't know the origins of the word lean, so I can't tell you exactly why we don't use it, but those are the reasons that we use heal and list, and those are the words we tend to use. Thank you for that question, Billy. Ashley Rossi, 999. Thank you so much. That's actually my girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen, but she's very, very kindly donated um, the super chat. Ashley, you don't have a question for me? Okay, you can ask me later. Um, here we go. Jennifer McCraig on the chat. Ex Princess crew member here. What's your favorite ship in the fleet? So, as I was saying, probably Dawn, uh, Dawn Princess. There you go, Ash. Sorry there. Um, Dawn Princess is probably my favorite. Uh, I had such a good time there as a cadet. Uh, and then again, Pacific Explorer, which is what she became. Fantastic ship. I do have uh, fond memories of the Island Princess, of course. Uh, I was there for two years and I met my girlfriend there, which is nice and uh, a nice ship for me. Great, great memories. BB Cruises just came in with a question there. Do you get to get off? board to port of call. So yeah, so if I'm in port, normally when under normal circumstances, I would be able to go ashore. I do find it hard. I work 12 to four, so midday to four, midnight to four. So I do tend to find it hard to find the time to go and explore, but when I do, I do enjoy it. And uh, I tend to go and explore as much as I can. Sometimes I can jump on a shore excursion if I can speak to Shore X and arrange it, um, which is excellent. So thank you for that question, BB Cruises. Stu. Okay, Stu, thanks for that question. What is it like uh, at Christmas? So I actually quite enjoy Christmas on board. I haven't done one for a couple of years, um, but Chris, up, all the way up to Christmas Eve is really good fun. And Christmas Eve is fantastic. We tend to do uh, an officer's sing-along in the atrium. Uh, so it's basically we all get down there who aren't work, anyone that's not working and we sing along to some uh, Christmas carols and get in the Christmas spirit and they often have snow machines going in the atrium and it's a very jolly time. Obviously the food's good as well. But then Christmas Day is always kind of a, a trough after that peak. It's, uh, it's a bit of a downer for people because it's suddenly you realise that you're not with your family. The food is never quite the same as your home cooking. Um, and... You've already had your fun, you've had your Christmas Eve, you've had your party. So Christmas Day is always a bit of a bit of a downer. 
but then we swiftly come on to New Year's Eve, which again is a lot of fun. So I don't mind Christmas on board, but I have to say Christmas Day itself, I prefer to be at home. Thank you for that question, Stu. Right, before I get into more in the chat, let me go quickly into some comments that I wanted to cover. Some uh, questions from the video comments. So number four was from Bruce. Bruce, another good question. Uh, you were in my last live stream as well. I hope you're watching. Um, thanks for all the great info and answers. You're welcome. Last comments about being a captain obtaining a master's license leads to a question. How do you continue your seamanship training while working for Princess? Do you study and take classes while at sea or do you take classes while you're on your three months off? Or do you need a break from a contract? So good question, Bruce. So we do constantly do training. We have a massive facility called Seasmart out in the Netherlands. Uh, it's cost the company about 75 million euros to build it. It's a hotel and training complex. And we go there at least once a year, every year to further our knowledge. I have also filmed footage from this. So hopefully I can bring that to you in a future video. Um, in addition to this training, obviously for Nautical College and for our official certificates, uh, we do have to go back to college to do exams. And for this, we do we are provided with study leave. You can apply for study leave several months in advance and the company will give you that time off. And they'll also continue to pay you usually two thirds of your salary. Um, so it's very supportive, really. They obviously, they want people to come up through the ranks and get their master license or their chief mate's license as I've done before. And uh, that allows them to progress within the company and bring something back to Princess Cruises. So it actually works very well for us. Thank you for that question, Bruce. It's a very good one. Right, let's go back to the chat. Who have we got? Uh, Rob Rathmore in the chat, he was asking about the listing and leaning again. Uh, Crown Princess had a listing incident a few years back. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, she hit the boss. She, at what point do you hit the point of no return? So essentially, uh, Rob, it's on any ship, it's very hard to hit the point of no return simply from a, a large heel um, or a large list. So that kind of incident was a, a accumulation of things on the crown. I think it was they were in shallow water, they're the squat, they were engaging autopilot and the functions weren't quite set up correctly. And then also you had uh, some wind and current effect as well, which caused this accumulation of things to cause this list. Um, and to try and get to a point where you could actually never come back would be extremely difficult on a ship unless you had some damage below the waterline. You'd have to get past that continuous walker deck and even above that to wherever the earliest entrance point is for water. And until the ship starts filling with water and the stability has changed, there's no way that she will completely turn and capsize. Thank you for that question. Didn't expect to get so much into stability in this uh, live stream today. Maybe I can do a video on that at some point. You can let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. What else have we got here? Oh, Mr. Mr. Loving the Q&A. Thank you very much. What does an environmental officer do on board? Would you know how to become one? Okay, so the environmental officer, his job has kind of changed over the years slightly. Now he's very much to oversee the entire operation of the ship in terms of environmentally. So he goes between the deck and technical departments to ensure that we're always compliant and environmental regulations such as MARPOL and um, various other, especially recently we've uh, had more regulations put in, or put into place for the company. So they're there on board to do that. Um, to become one, usually they're looking now for a past experience in engineering, usually second engineer above. They do like to hire within the company, but if you're coming from outside, if you've got some engineering background, as well as environmental uh, qualifications, and certainly it's a, a nice position to get into. You come in, you have a nice, nice job, really nice title. You basically work only directly below the captain, um, and even then, you can liaise directly with shore sides. So it's it's certainly a very unique position to be on board, and not one that usual ships or certainly merchant vessels would have. So I wouldn't mind being an environmental officer. Um, that's not the career path I chose, and now, like I say, mainly they're taking engineers. Um, to go in that direction, but it's a nice three-strike position, and I wouldn't complain if I was an Envo at all. Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. Marilyn, let's have a look. It's on the screen. Uh, okay. 
So, hi there, from Long Beach. Hey, Marilyn, welcome. I love Long Beach. Uh, crew paid in US dollars. So it varies, Marilyn, depending on your nationality. The majority of the crew are paid in US dollars. That is the currency of choice for the majority of crew members and for the company. Obviously, um, that's how the whole company essentially runs. Everybody pays for their cruises, usually in US dollars. And it's US dollars on board. Uh, for myself, I get paid in British pounds. That's the contract I have. Uh, lots of other people, European uh, officers, tend to get paid in euros. And it just kind of tends to vary. But the main currency, definitely for sure, is US dollars. Uh, thank you for that question, Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn, also you're asking about odd times a catch a light meal when you finish at 2 a.m. Yes, yeah, so if I finish at 4 a.m. and often I am hungry, um, but with the current situation we have on board, we do have set meal times. They do a night workers um, early breakfast, but I'd have to stay up a little bit too late for me to uh, attend that one. So I tend to get straight to bed and then I'm up for lunch um, by 11 o'clock to go and uh, grab some scran before I go back to work. Thank you for that question. Side adventure, excellent. Yeah, exactly. Side adventure. Um, DB, you're asking about schools and degrees. So yeah, as I mentioned, the North School College earlier, and uh, the qualifications you need is to go from officer to the watch, chief mate, which I have now, and then a master's license. I am going to do a video about this at some stage, and probably once I return home, because this is something I can discuss with you. I don't, I don't need to be on board to discuss it. So um, I'll definitely do that for you at some stage. So I can break it down a little bit further. Again, Joe as well, Joe Gladstone in the chat. Um, UK cruise ship deck cadet, not princess, okay. Uh, and to join a ship for the very first time, just as lockdown started, do you have any tips for first trip to see what great videos? Yes, Joe, I'm also gonna be doing that video. I'm planning to do uh, 10 things you should know before you go to sea for the first time, not only as to work on cruise ships, but also to be a deck cadet in general, and obviously with main focus being on cruise ships. Um, so I will bring that uh, out to you. I think you just got to come in with an uh, open mind. I'm going to give you a few tips, a few things you should know, um, just to help speed up the process. But there's a lot to learn, especially on cruise ships, lots of ranks, lots of positions, lots of protocols that will take time to learn. But luckily, you're given that in your years um, as a cadet. Um, so just make sure you take, make the most of it and uh, pick up all the knowledge you can. But thanks, Joe. I'll, I'll get that out to you at some stage. James Coleman is coming in the chat as well with a question. What is the difference between chief officer and first officer on cruise ships? So chief mate or chief officer that you'd hear about on cargo ships, for example, is three strike position, but they're directly below the captain. There is no staff captain. There is no safety officer on most cargo vessels. So they go captain, chief mate, second mate. On cruise ships, we have a few more ranks, obviously lots more going on. So we tend to have uh, more widely spread and delegated um, roles on board. So your staff captain on board would essentially be the equivalent of your chief mate. However, he doesn't stand a watch. So then we have our first officer, who's also our navigation officer, who does most of the voyage planning. Um, so that's the way it breaks, breaks down on board. Our safety officer is also a first officer, but we tend to call them the senior first officer because they've already done the first officer rank before going into a training role as a safety officer. I'll take another sip. Let's go back to one of the questions here. Um, Susan, <laughs> thank you for the uh, comment there. I just spotted it. Uniform is so sexy. Uh, thank you. Hopefully you mean my uniform, but uh, maybe not. Are the crew allowed to date guests? <laughs> Good question, Susan. In this company, we are not allowed to date guests. Um, maybe back in the old days, 20 years ago, it was a possibility, you know, the love boat, I'm sure you've seen it. And uh, that's all about that kind of thing. So, uh, but for us right now, I'm afraid not. So that's why you see so many crew members getting married and uh, getting into relationships. And luckily the, com the company do encourage that by offering you uh, ways like being linked and things like that as well. Right. <laughs> Thanks for that, Susan. Okay, so let's go for number five, shall we, John? Jean-Francois. Big question, lots of questions in here as well. Let's go through a couple of these quite quickly. Uh, talking about the AC on the ship, normally running throughout the ship, 
would have uh, thought things would be minimum closed off and about changing the way that it's supplied. Yeah, so again, all ships, including this one, of course, uh, did then try swap over to only be uh, putting in processed fresh air into the vessel uh, to ensure that there was no spread, no recirculation, very, very small recirculation anyway, mainly within the machinery spaces. Um, and so that's the reason, and we do all practice that fresh air intake on board these vessels. In addition to that, why it hasn't been shut off um, or minimized, obviously you've got to imagine that this is just a metal box. So if you were to turn your AC off, uh, into a ship that's in this kind of climate. You know, you're talking over 30 degrees Celsius each day, very hu high humidity, you're looking in the high 70% uh, into the 80s for humidity most of the days. Um, the things inside that metal box aren't going to survive for very long uh, in terms of furniture and things like that. Obviously, we'd keep the AC running everywhere else, but it's not really a feasible option to turn off the AC in massive areas of the ship. So thank you for that question. I get on to some of your other questions later, but let's go back to the chat for now. Morning, Alfie. Morning, Emma. Hip hoop hooray there. How are you doing? How are you going? Um, what else have we got here? Jay Spiegel, how many maneuvers have you completed? So I uh, personally, I've it varies this in the company and it depends. Um, obviously, I enjoy maneuvering. That's kind of why I'm here. And it depends what you class completely as, as a manoeuvre, but in terms of arrival, departure, arrival, arrival, departure, anchorage or alongside, uh, so far I've done one departure from alongside, which was in Skagway. That was on the Island Princess and several anchoring operations. Uh, even as cadet, I did do two arrival anchorages on PNR Australia. I had some very uh, willing captains and uh, they trust, not had a lot of trust in me. Danny Black, another sub. Thank you <laughs> for a drink after the stream. I appreciate it. I may just have to take you up on that as well. Thanks for that. Super chat. That's ace. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so in terms of maneuvers, not loads, but a few, you know, and I just did a ship handling course over in C-Smart, that training complex I was talking about before, and that was an extremely good course. I really enjoyed that. We were doing several maneuvers every single day and uh, I had good feedback on that. So obviously I've done enough and been paying close enough attention in order to successfully maneuver the vessel uh, if required. Yes, Danny. Colleen Satch, do senior officers get suite staterooms on the bridge level? Uh, so yeah, kind of Colleen. Um, they have large uh there's still officer cabins and they're just by the bridge normally on this on this uh ship we have all of our officer cabins on deck 12 for the bridge team and for the captain staff captain safety officer um the sa for safety officer and above their cabins are just a little bit nicer than mine they have a separate lounge and a bath and you know generally as you would imagine a suite on a cruise ship is essentially how they're set up as well um, so yeah, I can't complain if I was to get those to those higher ranks, it would definitely be an upgrade in the, uh, in the living standards, indeed. Thanks for that question. Uh, Jennifer McCaig, as a crew member 20 years ago, a big note to ever dating a passenger. So again, so even 20 years ago, well, it wasn't allowed. So you must be going all back a long way, um, with the old love boat. Jay Spiegel, you're asking about cover cells, bunkering facilities. Yeah, they do have a shore connection here. So that's how we are able to bunker our fuel. We did just complete a bunkering operation yesterday and that will last us now for many weeks. Um, such with so few crew on board. BB Cruises, you're also asking there about, um, this is the last comment I think in the chat, asking about when your contract ends, are you still getting paid? At the moment, yes, that is my salary. So I should be getting paid a uh, year round. And we'll see if that changes as, as things develop within the company with this current Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see, um, we'll see how that goes. So Emma, you see a question, hip hip hooray. Have they closed parts of the ship at the moment? So essentially, nothing's really completely closed. Obviously, they're not using a large amount of the ship. Uh, as you saw in my ghost video, a lot of the restaurants and things are closed up and uh, some areas are locked up, but nothing has been closed to the point at which you're not allowed to transit it. 
this did kind of happen when we were doing the quarantine period and there were some red zones and green zones, as I discussed in one of my videos, um, and we weren't allowed to go in certain areas. But for the moment, for the most part, we are certainly as a deck officer. Um, we have to be able to go for safety reasons around all areas of the ship. And we have our nightly security rounds going around on fire patrol to check all areas. Um, thank you for that question, Emma. Yeah, so number seven, or number oh, six, we'll go, we'll go with number six, Paul Lee Smith. Here we go. Excellent, Vidalfi. Thank you very much, Paul. Season crooner writing a novel. Okay. Possible to see the bridge and engine rooms as well. Not now, not at the moment, I'm afraid, Paul. Um, maybe in the future, if I have, uh, if I get to work more closely with Princess about these videos, and then they may allow me to film up there. Oh, just another subscriber, Planet828. Maybe you're in here. If you are, let me know in the chat if you're here, Planet828. Um, breakdown for the crew. So essentially, Paul, the idea is that the manning will be reduced further. So at the moment, we have 190 on board. The next stage, we believe, will be taking us down to around about 120 crew members. Uh, mostly, that is still going to be deck and technical. Uh, with a few various hotel officers and obviously doctors and nurses on board as well. Uh, so we'll see. So we're probably looking around 120 and that will be quite a realistic layup uh, number. Other part of that question was about the grey water. So just like the bunkering, they do have facilities here. We're actually discharging grey water to trucks. And because our production rate is so slow, we are able to do that and stay alongside. Um, so we are uh, transferring gray, our grey water to trucks shoreside and they come continuously throughout the day and they can take it off to a shoreside facility. Uh, otherwise, the ships are at anchor, say in Manila, they will be leaving each week to go outside 12 to discharge grey water, as you say, because um, they need to be underway over six knots and well outside the environmental limits in, a, in order to uh, discharge grey water. Thanks for that question, Paul. Hopefully you're watching today. Thanks for answering the question. You're very welcome, Emma. Thanks for asking a question. Um, Good evening from Kentucky. Good evening. AMS1. Hi, Alfie. When in Skagway, did you get a chance to do the Gold Rush train ride tour? If not, thoroughly recommend it if you get another chance. Okay, yeah, I did actually do that tour once when I was a cadet, my first ever time in Skagway uh, on the Star Princess. I did one week in Alaska. Um, and because it was my last week on board, and I'd done a pretty good job, I think, so they just let me go and adventure around and uh, enjoy Alaska. So I managed to get on that train and took me all, all the way up to the border. Uh, which was which good fun. Thanks for that. Okay, PD, I see your question there. What is the most difficult port you have docked at? Very good question. And it depends on the situation. A lot of it is the arrival uh, maneuver, which is tricky. Um, even ports like Sydney, when you're coming in, you have to be under pilotage and it's quite tight through there. And a lot of Alaska is similar. Uh, weather is a massive factor to maneuverability of the ship and uh, tides as well. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to uh, Messina and Sicily in Italy, um, but that channel there, I can't remember the name of the channel, uh, but it's very strong current. So as you're making your approach, you almost have to be at an angle where you would hit the breakwater and then turn last minute and get in alongside there. So that's certainly a difficult maneuver. Also in Ensenada in Mexico, it's a very tight port and we usually have quite a few ships there. So that can be very difficult and you want the weather to be on your side for that one. And so, yeah, lots of difficult maneuvers, especially as the ships are getting bigger and bigger. But luckily we do have thrusters, we have propulsion uh, available to us to assist and uh, it can be quite tricky. But it's very much uh, the biggest factor really on maneuvers is the elements. If it was zero wind, zero current every time and we, and we had the space, we could maneuver the ship virtually anywhere in the world. Thanks for that question. Shadow Rose, good morning. Hello, I know I know that name. I've seen you. I think both Danny Black and on uh, a minute, I've seen you around. Good to see you in the chat. Thanks. So if the sh if the ship was to flip, I see a question there. Um, yeah, you're going to get pretty wet, so uh, I wouldn't recommend being on a ship that's going to do that. <laughs> but no, uh, if it was to flip, 
hopefully we'd see it coming if for any reason and we would evacuate in time. Thank you for that question. I wouldn't worry if you're coming on a cruise. Uh, it's never happened to me. I've got a lot of time at sea. Denise, good question. Um, what happens when you run out of personal things like shampoo and get shopping? So yeah, so I was a little worried when we were going to set sail on this 45 day uh, journey over to Manila. We do tend to have quite basic supplies on board, um, and have quite a detailed grooming uh, <laughs> daily routine. Um, so I made sure that I ordered in some extra bits uh, from Amazon. Actually, my girlfriend assisted me and she sent them in. Um, so thank her for that. Um, I mean, I can get some and bring my own. I do tend to stock up before I come and my suitcase is usually overweight because it's full of shampoo and deodorant and everything else. Um, but we do have some on board if we need to buy some. And at the moment, obviously we're in guest cabins, so there is basic shampoo and shower gel provided in those cabins, just as like when you would be on board. Thank you for that question. Robert, I see a question there about the art and the jewellery. So um, obviously it's not my department, so I assume they have usual protocols and it is locked away somewhere safe in one of their lockers. Um, I wouldn't know exactly where that is because uh, it's not for me to know essentially. Um, but art, I'm sure, has been properly secured and put away uh, to make sure that it's not it's good that it's basically preserved. And the jewellery, I'd imagine the same thing. It may be that some is brought and taken off the ship uh, we were alongside in Port Everglades and in Miami. So I'm sure at some point there, they probably did take uh, quite a lot of it off. But thank you for that question. Max, there, I see your question. Um, any news or plans bringing, bringing crew back and restarting the cruises anytime soon? So at the moment, I don't have a date for the restarts. Uh, they're certainly looking um, in a few months time, I believe. Uh, for getting the crew back, the, main, the only way really we're going to be doing that is uh, via international airports and via bringing flying people to the ships, wherever they may be. Um, I know at the moment, as an extreme repatriation process, we are taking people home on ships, but that's because we want to get people home safely to their families. Um, whereas for getting people back out to work, for sure, it's going to be a, um, a flight. Uh, laptop style life. I see your, your comment there. The best definition I could find for you, for you on listing first recorded in 1620 to 30. Uncertain or original certain. Must have been a drunk sailor that couldn't say you leaning. And the word listing just stuck. Yeah, most likely. Thanks, laptop style. <laughs> but then, often now it comes about, you'd be surprised some of these words. Yeah, so let's have a look We're on question seven, I believe, of um, people that wrote in on other videos. Linda Porter, how many officers will stay with the ship and crew when the crew leave? So similar to the answer I've just given, how fast can the ship get ready once you're going to sail again? Thank you for the tour. You're very welcome. Um, so because I've already answered essentially the officers and crew question, we will be sticking with about 120 on board total crew members. And officers within that, if you're talking about deck and engine, you're probably talking, uh, we're still gonna have the full complete team on the bridge. There's gonna be nine of us up there. And then downstairs, you've got another probably 15 to 20 officers across the ranks, if not more. Um, so yeah, they will be staying with us. And there's a few in the hotel department as well. Uh, in terms now of the, how quick we can get ready, I believe the company are trying to keep it so that we can be ready to sail, provided we have the crew on board and they've completed the training within a week, maybe two weeks. Um, so quite quick turnaround, I should think. Uh, the ship's been put into a position now where it's uh, it's good to go, essentially. It just needs to be reinstated, relayed out, and have the crew on board for the training. Um, we'll see what new protocols come into force, which we may have to adapt to, um, and also may have to change the design of the ship slightly because of that. But we just don't know at this stage, so we will see. Thank you for that question. And number eight, uh, another question I had. Uh, again, this one is a nice one. Question for the future, you're obviously used to long distance relationship. Yeah, you know, getting more used to that. <laughs> How are you handling reality of not seeing your girlfriend for possibly a long period of time? So obviously it's horrible. Um, I'm not enjoying it at all. 
but we we did know going into this that it is a possibility. Uh, she's American, I'm um, English, so uh, you never know what might happen, especially when we live in different parts of the world and work on board cruise ships. We had planned for this year to essentially be together the whole time. I joined the ship just a week after she did, and then we were going to be together for my entire contract. I was then going to cruise with her as a passenger. Um, and then when we be back together in the summer, obviously all of those plans have now changed, um, but we are working on getting her over to the UK as soon as I'm finished here, whenever that may be. Um, and luckily we have uh, the facilities of FaceTime and Messenger and things like that. So I can't um, really, it's obviously been harder in the past than it is now. And like I said before as well, the company supports us by allowing us to link together uh, and be on ships together uh, when possible. So. It's, it's tricky, but we are trying to make it work. Thank you for that question. Okay, so let's go back to the chat now. Anything up there? So, good evening from Cumbria. Can't wait for your first tips video. I'm 16 years old and starting my cadetship with Carnival UK in September. Any tips for starting a career at sea at such a young age? Connor Mason. So Connor, good question. So I, was, I also applied when I was 16. Um, and then the decision was made. I spoke quite closely with uh, James Halley, who's the representative for Princess, and he said, look, go and get two more years uh, in college and get your A-levels and then come back to me. So you've done very well to be accepted at 16. Congratulations on that. Obviously, depending on how they do change the recruitment process now with all that's going on, um, keep an eye out. It's not the end of the world if you do have to delay it, even a year or two. Um, don't worry about that. Starting at such a young age, you just got to be prepared. Um, to be going into an environment where everybody already has a lot more experience in terms of life experience than you may have. And in addition to that, obviously experience at sea. The majority of crew members aren't recruited unless they're over 21 years of age. With it being Carnival UK, it might be a little bit younger. Um, but yeah, just be ready to, to step into that kind of world and just be ready to listen to what they have to say because obviously they do have a lot more experience to take on board what they, what they tell you and uh, you should be fine. Everybody will... Uh, look after you, I'm sure, for those first few months on board. John Kelly, good question there about uh, what job I'd be doing instead if I didn't have this one. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I've always enjoyed cooking, so I did always think maybe younger I'd be a chef. Uh, my cousin's actually a very talented chef, so I could probably follow in his uh, footsteps. Um, but yeah, it's, it's true tricky to think I've been going following this career path now since I was basically 14 years old so it's kind of always been with me in the future though I have always had an interest in law uh, marine law as well so I am thinking about maybe doing a, mas a master's in marine law and moving over to that part of the industry in order to get shoreside or possibly studying in business and uh, taking my skills that I've learned in this career over to a shoreside business but thank you for that question Yeah, so uh, BB Cruising asking about which cruise ship uh, and if I get to choose. I have been quite lucky over the years. I've managed to have some influence on where I go, especially now that I do have my girlfriend to link with. We are trying to get ships together. Uh, she's often kind of um, stuck with the contract that she has lined up uh, due to the dates and the timings and the teams that they have. Um, so I have a little bit more flexibility that I can sort of uh, request to go elsewhere. And move on but usually officers tend to stay with the ship around about two years before moving on just in order to give some continuity and build a strong team there uh, yeah discovery princess so that's um obviously a future ship for me i'm not i don't have any fascination with getting onto the brand new builds uh, maybe when she comes out and she's maybe six months to a year old i did do the regal after six months um i might go over there but they tend to use the same teams that have had on the new builds because they know the system. So after the discovery, they're planning to bring out some, bring out some LNG ships and so maybe they'll change the way they, they put the teams over there. But honestly, I'd quite like to try out the Sky. She looks like a fantastic ship, similar to the Regal, and I know the team, most of the team over there, and it's a really good team. So Sky Princess is probably up on the top of my list. Yeah, laptop lifestyle, I see a question there about being seasick. Um, yes, <laughs> to put it, put it 
uh, put it bluntly, I was uh, quite seasick even as a child on the ferries. I used to do the ferry run over um, to Calais. And it was obviously a worry, but I did try it out a few times before I started with the company. And I, I've never really found it too much of an issue. Cruise ships especially are very stable. We're very large ships. So you have to hit some pretty big waves. Obviously, by this point of my career, it doesn't really tend to affect me at all. But occasionally, if you just join the ship, if you've been home for a couple of months and you're, say, you're in one of the offices, so you can't really see the horizon or anything, you're just in a room that's moving around you, um, that can be quite a surreal experience and that can certainly uh, turn your stomach a little bit. So don't worry if anyone gets seasick, it's, it's normal and you do uh, grow out of it if you like. Thank you for that question. Neil Clark, that's a good question as well. Um, different languages are on board. Obviously, English is the main uh, language we use. And it's the main language of the Merchant Navy as well. Um, but obviously, there's varying nationalities. We do tend to use English for all operation, all jobs. Um, we're not adverse to people speaking other languages, especially in their downtime. And if it does help to get a job done, then go ahead and speak uh, whatever language will work best so long as everybody has a full situational awareness that's the most important thing on the bridge though it is only english and uh, we try to stick with that obviously that helps me a lot and any other british officers but uh, it does sometimes put other officers to a disadvantage but uh, so far in my career i've never seen anyone have a massive issue with that uh, certainly not in the higher ranks at least but thank you for that question good question so it's getting to 1853 we're gonna have to start wrapping this up I did promise you, though, um, yesterday on my community that I will be showing you a little preview of another video that I'm currently preparing. It's almost finished, and uh, I'll be getting that out to you in the coming days. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little preview now. Hopefully you enjoy it, and it gives you a little taster of what's to come on the channel. Um, whilst, whilst the preview's going on, you can ask some uh, other questions as well in the chat. Make sure you get your final questions in there. And I'll pick a couple to answer before I go. So enjoy this preview. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. You get to see a little bit more of the crew on board the Coral Princess. Hello, my name is Sasha. I'm from Bosnia. My name is Rudolf. I came from Indonesia and I'm an assistant waiter here. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Ariel from Philippines. Uh... I'm laundry master here in Coral Princess. Hi, ah, I'm Rodrigo de Madara Jr. Hi, my name is Junior Alexander. My uh, job is a uh, maintenance uh, receipt. Yeah, I'm a laundry attendant and I'm also from Philippines. Of course, I want to say hello to my family, especially to my daughter and to my wife. They are a good condition. Nice coffee, everything is good here. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rudolf. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that little preview there. Um, so basically what I've done is I've gone around to interview some of the crew. I had a lot of questions asking about the morale of the crew and uh, basically what is happening on board and who is left on board. So I thought it was good for me to go around and show you guys a little bit of that. Uh, I'll get that out to you in the next couple of days. A um, couple of questions I saw pop up on the chat whilst that was playing. There's one from there from uh, Felicia Lane. Have you ever experienced stormy seas that caused you to be afraid for you and the passengers? Um, never really afraid. I mean, it is troubling when you have severe seas, especially down in South America, down around Cape Horn, things like that. Um, and you hit the occasional big wave and you get a big list and uh, you worry that someone may have uh, been injured or something. But we do everything we can to try and prevent that and in terms of changing side direction, changing speed, obviously utilizing our stabilizer fins that we have on board. Um, so hopefully we manage to avoid that as best we can. But you can be scary sometimes. BB Cruises, oh my God, this is such a good live stream. Please, please make more. Thank you, BB Cruises. I appreciate that shout out. Um, it's it's obviously something I'm still working on. So if you guys are enjoying it, I really do appreciate you lot, uh, checking in with me and what coming back and watching it over again if you want to go back through the questions. Um, I will keep making them. At the moment, I seem to be on a bit of a two-week routine. So maybe in another two weeks, depending on where I am and what my situation is, I can come back to you with another one. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Kat 
I see you're asking about my videos. Um, so yeah, so I just use iMovie on the Mac. I know it's quite um, low key, kind of basic, but it works for me and it's been working for me so far. At the moment, I don't really have many facilities. As you can tell in the videos, I don't have microphones. I don't really have a professional camera, um, but I do the best with what I have and hopefully you're still enjoying the content. So uh, thank you for asking that about the videos and I hope you're enjoying them. Brad Box, um, for the kitchens, you know, the galleys on board, I have taken a little bit of footage. Uh, I may bring that to you in a bit more of a behind the scenes uh, video, but we'll see. Obviously I've just done a tour of most of the ship, the passenger areas. Um, so I'd have to try and uh, incorporate that at a different stage. Um, if I can though, I definitely will. And as I said, maybe at some point I can do a cooperation or collaboration with Princess and have more permission to go around in more of these specialist areas. Thanks for that question. Hi Margaret, I see you uh, booked the Sky Princess in November. Hopefully that will still be happening. Uh, I won't be seeing you there, I don't think, but you never know. I could be there. So uh, thanks a lot for that. And you have a good day as well. For me, I'm going to be heading now for some dinner and uh, enjoying the rest of my evening. Thank you to everybody that has got in touch, that has left comments on the videos and has got in touch and been here with me through this live stream and asked some excellent questions. Hopefully I was able to answer them um, fully for you and you if you does lead to have any more questions then don't be afraid to put more in the comments below this video once it's come out and uh, i'll try to get those back to you on the next stream thank you once again for tuning in and i will see you on the next one mm -hmm.